really close. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Don't, don't get up here in front of you. Right. Just like that. You'll pick you fine. Right. Okay. Uh, try not to use the microphone. So we, what we've had a few people do as they start talking, they microphone, but just, just hold it there, do your pointing like this. Right, sir. Kick. Hello, my name is Von Yellowwolf. I'm the stock manager and I'm the head of the warehouse department. This is the tribal trading post. It is one of the sections of Colville Tribal Enterprises. We opened this store basically because this community was 20 miles, 30, 40 miles away from any stores in our surrounding areas. And none of the food chains would stop and put, it, put their store in here. Basically, we, we try to compile most all the people in the basic food staples. This produce section here. We have all, most of our deli and picnic area, frozen foods. We carry five major lines. We carry um, staple food lines and meats both fresh and frozen. We also carry our household items, things for the house, care and maintenance of your yard, house. We also carry large frozen section on products that be down the aisles here. Basically, this is all our frozen section of ice creams and dessert areas. On down this other way, we carry our juices, most all of our canned vegetable area. Okay. About right here? About right here? Okay. Ready this time, Darby? Hello, my name is Vaughn Yellowwolf. I am the stock manager and also the warehouse manager. This is this is the Colville Tribal Trading Post, one of the Colville Indian Enterprises of the Colville Indian Reservation. We open our store, our store is a warehouse type. As none, none of our stores in this area were near enough for our community. We basically carry most all the food staples as in this section over here, the produce. Here's our picnic and jelly area. And we carry all our frozen sections, our frozen vegetables, our frozen dinners, our convenient foods. We try to carry most all the things in this community that uh, people in this area like to own. Like our frozen section here is our dessert area for our ice creams and our toppings, some of our drinks. Along this other area back over this way, we carry most of all, all of our canned goods, canned fruits, canned vegetables, fruit juices, canned jars. This next area, we carry most all of our, our staples as spaghettis, our basic canned meats products, and a baby section. Our next style, we carry all your staples are your spices, sugar, salt, your baking goods. In our next aisle, we carry our candies, cookies, our cereals, both ready mix and to make and instant. Our next aisle is our household goods section. This carries all our soaps, cleaners, cleansers of all types. Our next aisle is our pet food section and our auto section and also our school supplies. Our next area, we carry all our coffees and our soft goods area. It's down further on the end. It's kind of hard to see. And our breads, our bakery section. Most all this other area back on this other way, can't hardly see over here is is extension of our soft goods and also our health and beauty items. And our beverages. In this, this store, it's a warehouse type, like I said before. And the work in here 
covers a large span of, yeah. of occupations. We carry our stockmen, our warehousemen, our management personnel. We also carry we also carry trainees. We train students that are in school for our federally funded programs under CETA. To, um, give them a basic knowledge of the store and of the jobs that can be attained in the retail retail field. One of one of our stockmen, you can introduce yourself. His name is George Freelander. <coughs> Move over this. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, we we uh, c we do uh, do training of a uh, few of these workers here that do it. They have worked out real fine, especially our CETA program. And uh, our our management now is pretty pretty well got things under control. We did have problems in our management a little bit, and I think we have got it going right now. I don't know. Don't got too much to say right now. George Freeland is one one of the one of the top personnel in our in our stock room and warehouse. He's finished his school and he's taken on a job training here. And it'd be be better for for him when he would have if he could get across to other students that are gonna go into retail business the need for education, especially in you go into higher management. You need your education like in business management. My new associate of arts degree in business management. Accounting helps. And a basic fundamental speech patterns to communicate with your workers, with your community, with your bosses, and within the personnel and the self. And education helps, it gives you a stepping stone. We also have our cashiers. Our cashiers run these machines but it takes a lot of training. And the training of our non-graduate students takes a longer time and they're a lower rate of pay than our high school and our college level personnel. That's about it.
widen out. Yeah, I'm gonna widen out and show that whole house that pan on, okay? Uh, uh, my name is Walter A. Muma, chairman of the Colville Indian Housing Authority, and the Colville Business Council established the Colville Indian Housing Authority by enacting Resolution 1971-267. The Colville Indian Housing Authority was established to help eliminate inadequate housing on the Colville Indian Reservation. One of the first acts performed by the newly created authority was to select aides to conduct a family-by-family, home-by-home survey of all the Indian enrolled members of the Colville Indian Reservation. The aides surveyed 864 families who live in 605 homes. Survey, surveys took six weeks. The result of the survey showed that there was a need for 450 new homes. The authority then made one application on September 1, 1971 to the Housing Urban Development to cause 450 new HUD homes to be built on the Colville Reservation. In November 1971, the Housing Authority received official notice that application was approved for 120 HUD homes. Then, prepare, then preparation was begun to select sites and whatever was necessary to get homes built. Un, built. Unfortunately, there were numerous delays till finally in July 1976, the sale of contract was signed and now the HUD homes are under construction with Inchlim being the first area to receive said homes. The Housing Authority is not just limited to working with the HUD homes. The authority also was given the responsibility of administrating the Housing Improvement Program, or as we call HIP. This is a program that operates by using federal grant funds to, to uh, renovate and make existing homes more livable by necessary repairs, and in many cases, installing plumbing and electrical appliances, hookups, and hookups. In the past five years, approximately 280 people have been assisted in some way or another by this program. The Housing Authority is also responsible for maintaining tribal homes and trailers that are leased to tribal employees. At the present, at the present time, we have approximately 30 units. The tribal maintenance program has also installed plumbing and necessary facilities to a number of different tribal projects. The governing body of the housing program is led by Chairman Walter A. Muma, Vice Chairman is Albert Orr, Secretary is Mary Lemery, Members are Lula Auberton, Earl Crawford, and Marie Bremner is an alternate member. The Administrative Staff is Harvey Moses, Sr., Executive Director, Harvey Moses, Jr., Assistant Director, Bookkeeper, a Secretary is being sought at this time. Mr. Red. Circle has been a member of the staff until recently when he transferred to the accounting department. Harvey Moses Sr. is a high school graduate of Nespelum and has several years of bookkeeping and typing in high school and is a veteran of World War II, served four years in the Pacific. After the discharge work as a carp discharge after discharge work as a carpenter for Morrison and, and uh, and Knudsen at Grand Coulee Dam and is also a rancher. The director, the director has taken several courses in bookkeeping and typing through both Big Bend and Wenatchee Valley Colleges and has taken special management courses in housing through NARO in Washington, in Washington, D.C. after being appointed in August 1971. The assistant director and bookkeeper is also a high school graduate from Coulee Dam High School is a veteran of the Vietnam conflict, has had a year training in welding from Constra, Constra Costa College, San Pablo, California, and will complete two years of college at the end of winter quarter from Wenatchee Valley College in the business field. Mr. Dean Fry, recently appointed as maintenance manager, is a former logger, a journeyman, carpenter, and has done plumbing, has worked with electrical appliances, and has done some contract work on building homes. Mr. Wayne Picard is a high school graduate and has worked as a journeyman carpenter for several years. Also has done some plumbing work. Charlie Michelle, maintenance helper, is a high school graduate, has worked on the housing improvement program for three years as a helper and is now on temporary appointment with maintenance program. The housing improvement program at present has 12 employees. 
four lead men experienced in carpentry, plumbing and general knowledge in the electrical field, four carpenters with some experience in plumbing and electrical fields, four helpers, no skills needed, just a strong back. Okay, there's going to be an insert of the meeting. Uh, do you know what reel that's on, Skip? No. Uh, we don't know what reel it's on, but there will be an insert of the uh, Housing Authority meeting in progress uh, to insert into this section here. Okay, good morning. Uh, I'm Leona Cohn. I'm the CHR from the OMAC area. I um, Mostly what my job consists of is assisting with medications or medical applications, any health problem. And uh, I am one of, oh, let's see, there's Dolores Schaefer from the Inchlim District, Wanda Alva from the Keller District, Matilda Berica from the Spinum District, myself, Elsie Picard, which is a floating position, Glenda Mashan, who works at Pasco Sherman Indian School, and our supervisor is Lena Wilson. And then we have an ambulance driver who is uh, Dave C. Quill, or we all know him by Charlie. And then we have a, a highway safety officer who is Howard Stewart, and Dean Fry's maintenance manager and supervised by Harvey Moses, senior housing division. We work pretty close with these people. And um, well, it's a good field to be in. The most important is being able to, you know, being able to uh, c communicate with people. So if any of you are good talkers or interested in any field like this, it's most important that you do have a good education. Uh, there's a lot of calls for lab technicians, nurses, doctors. Uh, right now we're really, really heavy into physical therapy. So, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a good range to be into if you have, you know, if you like working with any, any hospitals or any aid programs like these. Um, each day is a different day. I mean, you can't say, well, I want to do this today because it just never turns out that way. So like me, I just, I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. And um, we work with a lot of other re resource agencies, so public assistance, Social Security, um, the jails. Um, it's just a whole, whole new world out there every day. And I don't have the chance to get bored because it's, it's, it moves too fast. So if any of you are interested in this, um, like I said, it's, it's most important to get your education. But like I said, we need a lot of, a lot of medical people out there all the time. And thank you very much for your attention and your time. Is that good enough? Hey. <laughs> Did I hear everything? Did I put that in there too? Did you I said, put that in? You said, thank you very much. Is that good enough? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, well, I, I hit everything I was supposed to, though, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good enough. Sam, fast talker. Don't take me odd day. <sighs> now I'll, I'll write down what you told me to say. Foster care. Oh, I forgot that. Adoptions. Child abuse and neglect. I'm on that. Vocational rehabilitation. Same I'll start and then I'll turn it over to him. Okay. And when, I'll start with a picture of just you, so introduce yourself. And then when you introduce him, I'll say both of you. And then uh, when he introduces you, you can say who you are. Or if he introduces you, you won't have to say who you are. But uh, I'll just see him to start with. And then, and then I'll not to both of you. And at the very end, just say thank you or whatever, and then silence. Ten seconds or so, so we have room to get out of it. What is that? Oh, it's breaking. Oh, no. What is it like, most of us? Trying to get to North West Indian Training Institute. Okay. Okay, right there. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is Thomas Watt. And I'll be covering a few information of our alcoholism program for the Kabul tribe. Mm -hmm. Past history, we've been in operation since 1970. 
We have a total of uh, staff people. We have two counselors in this district with one director, a counselor in each other, uh, each three districts on the reservation, Keller, Inchlim, and Spino. Our objectives are, and we're funding through the National Institute of uh, NIAAA out of Washington, and some of our objectives for the program is providing service to the alcoholics on the reservation, both Indian and non-Indian. Uh, we're primarily interested in developing, and we are in the process of developing a youth-orientated program uh, related around alcoholism, drug abuse, uh, therapy, treatment procedures are going to be geared around uh, cultural activities of the tribe as a kind of a prevention thing. At this time, I'd like to introduce our semi-youth counselor, if you use the word, Ernie McCraigie. Ernie. <coughs> Hello. You know, on, on our uh, alcohol education that we're going to be getting into, the, we're working on with the Okanagan County Alcohol Program to get into the schools, we're going to, we're uh, talking about uh, dealing with uh, feelings, you know, for on, on yourself, on how it affects you, on holding your feelings in, and how it affects the, your immediate family, and how it affects you in school. And then we talk, uh, going to use a bit of, on science of alcoholism, the effects of that alcohol has on the human body. Be showing films on alcohol in the human body and how it, how it affects you. And then we'll be using uh, history of alcohol, what is alcohol, and uh, history of alcohol in the Indian people and in uh, alcohol in Indian today. And uh, on on alcoholism, uh, alcohol alcohol effects for the Indian and the non-Indian go up until the emotional part of the part of the phase of alcoholism, and then that's where it starts differing because of the Indian culture and the lost identity that the Indian has about his culture. And uh, this through different human resource programs, you know, on the reservation, uh, where we're going to be making a comeback on that. And with what knowledge I have on Indian culture and our director, also, who has uh, a lot of knowledge on the on the Indian culture, we we figure that this this is a way to get in to help the youth, you know, get back some of their identity. Pl plus, also in the progress, be able to understand alcoholism better, to where they would be able to make make a better choice on on their drinking part. We're not. We're not uh, geared to be be trying to stop. We're just just uh, get everybody more information about it before they do, you know, make the choice. And uh, and now uh, through uh, juvenile probation offices in Okanagan and through the through the parole and probation department of the tribe, we got an alcohol information school which is uh, held on different nights in the four districts on the reservation. And uh, I know as we, show, we uh, show some films on feelings and on alcoholism and, and on drugs, and then we uh, show some on the, the alcohol, drugs, and alternatives, which, which uh, gives a person, you know, a choice of you know, what way, what way they can go. And I thank you. I have one more, one more comment that uh, I didn't uh, re relate to was the, the fact of our qualifications to hold positions like we do. Right now our present staff is uh, being trained under the Northwest Indian Institute out of Salem, Oregon. The past counselors in the program have had a year intensive training out of the University of Utah alcoholism program. And we are, have some of our counselors in the Wenatchee Valley Extension courses, some out of Eastern Washington State College. 
and it is, our training is ongoing all the time, and uh, and the staff is doing a good job. And I thank you. Okay. My name is uh, Sergeant Victor L. Desitel. I work for the Caldwell Confederated Tribes. I've been a police officer for approximately six years. And uh, some of the basic requirements of becoming a tribal police officer is 21 years of age, never convicted of, been convicted of any felonies. And today, police officers, education-wise, should at least have a high school education with way police, science, and everything is now, you should at least have two years of college. And what we are working for in our department, for every one of our police officers, is to have a degree in police science. It's getting very technical now, and uh, I believe this is going to be mandatory as uh, police work goes on later in life. Uh, fish and game, our officers in that department are similar to a tribal police officer, but you have uh, game management, enforcement, and uh, <clears throat> that's about it, I guess. Okay. Talking the microphone, but just just over there, do your pointing like this, right, sir? Okay. Hello, my name is Von Yellowwolf. I'm the stock manager, and I'm the head of the warehouse department. This is the tribal trading post. It is one of the sections of Colville Tribal Enterprises. We opened this store basically because this community was 20 miles, 30, 40 miles away from any stores in our surrounding areas. And none of the food chains would stop and put it, put their store in here. Basically, we, we try to compile most all the people in the basic food staples. This produce section here. We have all most of our deli and picnic area. Hello, my name is Vaughn Yellowwolf. I am the stock manager and also the warehouse manager. This is this is the Colville Tribal Trading Post, one of the Colville Indian Enterprises of the Colville Indian Reservation. We open our store, our store is a warehouse type. As none, none of our stores in this area, frozen foods, we carry five major lines. We carry um, staple food lines and meats both fresh and frozen. We also carry our household items, things for the house, care and maintenance of your yard, house. We also carry large frozen section on products that be down the aisles here. Basically, this is all our frozen section of ice creams and dessert areas. On down this other way, we carry our juices, most all of our canned vegetable area. 
Okay. Bar right here? Bar right here? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Ready this time, Darby? <laughs> <laughs>